Hey guys, welcome to another episode of with the struggling hunters, episode sixty-seven. Um, we got me and Eric here again tonight to uh, discuss. Well, discuss whatever's on our mind, kind of tonight. We do have kind of a of a layout, but it's kind of what what's on our mind of uh, coming up in the in the uh, in the future of our hunts and preps and stuff and. And I kind of wanted to throw out too, if you haven't watched our last last episode, we kind of compared how how we hunt, um, how we as hunters need to be kind of like mountain lions in the woods to get closer to the animals and get in that mental stage. So if you missed that episode, um, don't be scared. We, we're okay with you missing it, just as long as you go back and listen to it. And then hit the like and subscribe button, which would be awesome. But uh but anyways, we won't spend too much time on that. We'll just kind of dive it, maybe just, well, we'll just dive off into discussing what we're going to discuss tonight. And uh, like I said earlier, me and Eric were kind of talking about just where we're at at the time of year and uh, what that looks like as far as between now and when the, when the hunts open. And uh, we got kind of talking about, you know, balancing life and, uh, and prepping for hunt and then what the maybe what the hunt schedule is going to look like and we both realize that you know we got things to balance <laughs> and uh um i'll kind of maybe i'll turn the time over to eric a little bit because he but he is he's uh so eric's a man of many hats if you guys don't know he's a <laughs> uh, uh husband father um home provider uh and then he's also going to take up coaching, and also a host or a or, or a personality who are you struggling hunter. What, what would that be? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess just a <laughs> just a personality or a yeah a podcaster trying to <laughs> trying to do the thing, trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, so Eric's putting on a bunch of hats this year, and. Um, so we thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about that, trying to, you know, more or less without, you know, being too, putting the pun in there too much, but struggling between, you know, life with, with what that brings. And so, um, you know, there's going to be some sacrifices and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that tonight too. But yeah, so I guess with that, we'll let Eric maybe discuss his, his coaching ventures and, and, uh, <laughs> and, what that looks like yeah yeah sounds good um well let me let me kick off by saying one thing though is uh we, we got a little bit of engagement on our last on our last uh podcast where we got a couple comments and uh, i just want to thank those guys you know you probably listening to this one thank you guys for uh commenting and and uh engaging with us it's it's kind of cool to see um you know where we can improve and, and what you guys want to hear us talk about. And, and, uh, you gave us some good ideas. So other people that are listening to, you know, if you want to comment and ask us, um, or let us know about some subjects that you'd like to know more information about, or at least our spin on, on those subjects, we'll definitely be glad to, uh, get in on those. And I think in the near future, in the next couple of podcasts, we're going to take the advice of one of the comments and, and uh, talk about one of the subjects that they brought up. So I uh, just wanted to kind of shout that out and really, you know, say thank you for uh, engaging with us on that front. Uh, yeah. Moving on from that though. Yeah. So this year with life balance, uh, Joe and I got to talking tonight before we started the podcast. And, and uh, like Joe said, this year, especially, it feels like I'm a man of many hats, if you will. And, um, pretty much right whenever my hunt starts uh got some coaching stuff going on with my with my boy with flag football so i'll be doing that um my work life uh yeah you know three kids at the house uh work life uh the well, football thing i i'm doing school on the side right now trying to do some schooling so yeah i'm pretty busy what were you gonna say joe well, I'm going to say too, like, you know, you kind of brought up a point uh, earlier. <laughs> we'll probably be saying a lot tonight one, before we got doing the podcast when we're talking. 
but you know, uh, the, you know, being this is your first year, uh, archery hunting and, you know, you kind of got excited because one of the benefits to archery hunting is that extended amount of time that you get to hunt mm -hmm. and, uh, which is a huge benefit and, you know, and, ex and, uh, kind of an exciting aspect of it. But then, you know, comes and then life gets thrown in there of, you know, that happens to coincide with the same time as, uh, as your boys, uh, professional football career yeah 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 <laughs> yeah no you're 100 percent right and and uh so i've been like trying to figure out how i'm gonna juggle it i have vacation set up or saved up to where uh i'm gonna try to get out as much as possible but one of my attack plans earlier before all this came about and before i realized uh what i was getting myself into and doing the archery hunt this year i was like oh i'm gonna you know i'm gonna hunt like four days a week or something you know i'll take i'll take off friday night hunt saturday sunday monday tuesday uh and i'll try to do that as much as i can through september that was my big plan and then uh i got a phone call a week ago or whatnot and they're like are you gonna coach again this year and they're always the organization that he works for or that he plays for they always need coaches and I've coached the last three or four seasons and it's a, it's a good, I mean, it's so much fun and I'm glad to do it. And, you know, it's, it's a ton of fun. I've had a little success with it and we won our little championships and stuff in the past. This last year we didn't do so good, but, uh, or this last season rather, but, um, but anyways, yeah, we, we, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun and it's good for him. And so, you know, just have a ton of fun doing it. But like I said, back in February, whenever I was like, I'm going to go ahead and archery hunt this year, I wasn't thinking about football at all. And then that phone call came out and I'm like, oh yeah, how am I going to, how am I going to schedule all this, you know? And then school starting and everything else. And I, I guess part of the reason that we brought up this podcast or brought this up during this pro podcast is the one reason that we did this podcast call ourselves the struggling hunters because this is part of the struggle right this is part of this is part of like the everyday life this is where most of us can relate you know me and joe we never claimed i mean i've kind of said this before but we never claimed to be the best hunters in the world and we have our struggles and this is like part of that package is uh, we don't really we don't really get that opportunity to go out in the woods hopefully one day one day we can sit there and set here and be like yeah you know our work day consisted of us doing a big old hike up in the mountains where we're gonna hunt this year and we scouted and blah 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 but but for now it's all a hustle it's all trying to find the time to scout yeah. about the most time that i have is e-scouting and that's that can be a nightmare sometimes because it looks <laughs> right. it looks good from above it looks really good from above sometimes but then you get out there and you're like where did all this scrub oak come from <laughs> <laughs> right true so. <laughs> and then you know like that's like the inner like the other hard thing too you you throw in there you know you, you hunting takes up a big deal of your life mm. you know, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna hit hunting hard hunting's gonna hit hard you know with with meaning that you're gonna spend a lot of time and you know be dedicated to it and then and more or less, if you want to be good at it, with goes with the, with anything that you're doing. If you want to be good at whatever it is, you got to spend time on it. And and then you know, as being that you know, we both of us value our family lives as much as we kind of you know value our our hunting life too. Is you know, you got to draw that balance and and like kind of what you said <laughs> again. What you another thing you brought up, you know while we're discussing what we're going to talk about tonight and like, you know, we, we didn't as uh, you know, giving your boy the time he needs to, you know, like as, as a coach and then, you know, uh, being there for him as a dad and a coach, you know, that's kind of, you ain't, you're not going to be able to do that for, for too many more years. And so what's wrong with letting that take in the front seat right now? You know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I've had my, I've had my glory days. I've had my fun. I've had, you know, it's, it's, this is his time. And, and 
you know, trying to do a podcast and, and a channel, you know, whatever that channel looks like. We haven't done a lot of videos outside <laughs> of podcasting this year, but, but we're trying to develop, you know, as time goes on, we, we, we have a lot of plans in the books to uh, make more videos around hunting lifestyle and uh, re I mean, all kinds of stuff, hunting videos, review videos, what, what, whatever, you know, but it's all kind of based around the outdoors life. Um, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm also, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a dad and, and being a dad kind of comes first in a lot of sense. And, you know, one day, one day when this podcast gets bigger, I mean, the goal is, is this is where our eight to 10 hours is going to go is doing, doing content and stuff for, but, but right now it's just a side hustle. And, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes the side hustle has to get put aside for, for your family. So. So it is what it is, but, um, but regardless, man, like, uh, one, one, one of my favorite sayings that I say to myself all the time and, you know, through all this, I mean, I'm kind of going down this, down this little, little, whoa, it's me, uh, section with, you know, being so busy, but, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to do my best and forget the rest. And, and that means with everything. So when I'm out there coaching, watching my son play football, you know, I'm just going to do my best and forget the rest during that time. And whenever I do get out to the woods, I'm just going to do my best and forget the rest. And that's just kind of the way it goes. It's the way the old cookie crumbles, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, um, it definitely, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, one of those things that's kind of like, oh man, that sucks. Uh, I, I really wanted to put a lot more focus and attention on hunting and, and as, uh, as I get closer, I'm like, Oh, this is getting in the way I brought up, uh, doing some, doing some, uh, online schooling stuff this year. been working on that for a while, still going to work on it for a while after hunting, but, um, uh, you know, that that's been getting in the way a little bit too. So trying to stay caught up on everything and also enjoy my life. Uh, stay pretty busy, but I don't know, there's something to be said, you know, it's kind of satisfying at the end of the day to to uh look look back at yourself and you go man i'm i'm tired <laughs> i've been i've been hustling a lot but uh it, you know i feel accomplished and and that it's kind of a good feeling to feel that way um so so regardless you know i'm just like i said i'm gonna do do everything i can and and i have plans to try to hunt at least two to three days a week for all of september uh, maybe I'll try to get a fourth day in there in a row, but it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a, it's going to be a little, a little goofy at times to, uh, to manage everything, but I'll just do what I can and, and go from there. But I know that a lot of other people are feeling that way. You know, a lot of other people only have the weekends to hunt or, or, um, you know, maybe they only get one day to hunt and that's just all part of it, man. But we all do this because it's, uh, it's, it's our, it's our passion, you know, and, and uh, I, I can't imagine what I would do in September, October and November if I didn't hunt, you know, I, it's, <laughs> it's weird. It, it would just be weird to me. And um, the more, the more, you know, I'm hoping like, in the next few years, there's even more opportunities for us to get out and hunt during those months. Right. And, uh, but hopefully other things kind of slow down around it too, you know, where, where, yeah, we're running around and hunting everywhere else, but not everything else. Like I can, I can kind of schedule things around it a little bit better in the next few years, but, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's exciting times and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to, having those same struggles or same uh scheduling conflictions with right. their hunting and 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 it plays a part i mean there's you know uh every every chance that you're out there in the woods i'm gonna probably chop this up a little bit but every chance you're out there in the woods is a better chance for success and so you know if you're only getting out there a couple times a, a week or you know i mean chances for success kind of lessen a lot more. And, and I really had big plans of spending a lot of time out there through the whole month and getting, trying to really create those chances. And now I'm looking at it going, Ooh, I don't know if I'm just going to have to make the most of it as while I'm out there, you know, and really 
Right. Well, not so. Get... Oh, go ahead. I'll no, look. go ahead. Finish it. Go ahead. Okay. All I was gonna say was uh, was one thing about it though is maybe 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 I can make turn that into a strength, and knowing that I only have a couple of days, just hunt hard, 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 and then get back to civilization and then you know try to get rested up and basically do it all over again but but every chance that i get out there just try to hunt twice as hard as i maybe would have if i would have been out there for five days right and i think that and like what i was going to say was like kind of along those lines and partly why we've been you know sitting down and talking once a week is is uh getting it through our our uh, thick skulls what's the proper way way to hunt elk and and yes there's you know there's good things to do and there's bad things to do and i think both of us are trying to break those those habits that we don't know that we've had that have been keeping us unsuccessful and well, i guess where i'm trying to get is uh you know having those three to you know two to three maybe four days of hunting you know, it's not like you're, you know, I, I seem like all the articles I read is they're always like, oh, if you can, you know, stretch your four day hunt into a five to seven day hunt. And st- if you take in seven days, try to stretch it out to 10 days, you can always go home early. And, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you can always go home early. But at the same time, you know, like I'm trying to, you know, conserve t- paid time off and trying to, you know, bring a check home every day or every week and. And so with that, I'm trying to, and, uh, and going along with your hunting hard is trying to understand how to hunt smart too, you mm-hmm. know, trying to, you know, understand, you know, what, where the elk are going to be. And I think my, one of my biggest things is, and I've known this for years and I've always, you know, like, I think I've done it for years, but I haven't been doing it correctly when that is, you know, the, the elk are nomadic and they're not going to be you know, setting in the same spot all day. Like, you know, they're going to, they have their feeding areas or bedding areas or watering er- areas. And and then if someone else was in there, and they got blown out of there. There may not be in where, where I see them anyways, I've seen them before, but, uh, you know, just trying to, you know, really pay attention as to what time, what, what season the elk is in, in its life, you know, like, pre-rut pro, post-rut um after the is after the post-rut i think is it kind of see you know so like the they're late all season yeah so they're all they, all that affects where the elk is going to be and and i think i've always tried to hunt and been like oh i just need to be out in the woods which to an extent is great you know like you're not going to shoot shoot an elk sitting at home eating a eating a steak or eating your bag of funyuns you know it um <laughs> and i'll say that's what my success was during a turkey hunt was the fact that i was out there every day after work and clued into what area the turkeys were kind of in and worked my way into that area and i happened to jump a turkey I, <laughs> you know i wasn't necessarily doing what turkey would want to do to be coming to me me and the turkey just happened to pass um, tracks, you know, we same happened to be going down the same path that day. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, more or less that's, you know, like kind of what you're saying too is being out there and hunting hard and then, you know, trying to, and then I'm, I'm, I want to throw in that bag of refining the skills and understanding of where they're going to be. So that way, you know, that ups the chance of, of, uh, of seeing them. And, you know, just trying to, as I'm sitting there thinking that through my head, just kind of like jumped to percentages, you know, like, you know, if you say, you know, on a hundred percent scale, you know, just being out in the woods, that's probably what 60% of it. And then there's, yeah or maybe even 70% of it is just being out there, but then understanding where the elk are going to, or not, I shouldn't say going to be, but where the elk would like to be, you know, that, that jumps your odds up to, you know, 80% success rate. And 
And then being where the elk is, you know, trying to understand where that is to get that hundred percent, you know. And I th think that's what we're, what the goal of the struggling hunters is, is trying to understand as we've been trying to, to get there. And I don't know that we'll ever really be there, but, you know, <laughs> trying to create those shortcuts to get there sooner and, and yeah, uncreating, cutting out the bad habits <laughs> that, that keep that from happening. Yeah. Trimming, trimming the fat, trimming the yeah. fat of all the bad habits and just going right after uh, all the things that can make you more successful. And like you I, said too, of uh, having three or, you know, like having like the five to 10 different areas that you want to hit. And I think, you know, that's probably smart hunting hard. You know, you're going to have get into those areas. I don't see sign. I'm going to bump out and go to my next area. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely, well, and I think especially with, uh, you know, may, maybe only having two to three days a week to, to get it done. I, I kind of feel like that's the best, that's kind of the best approach to have. And, you know, maybe, maybe you get in an area and out of one of your 10 spots, five to 10 spots, and it's kind of midday and you're like, I don't know. I think I just hit this spot early. I'm going to come back this afternoon, but I'm going to go hit the next spot. Right. You know, and, and uh, maybe that's what you do. You go back to that spot. Cause it just looks like a good evening spot, but, but um, I don't know. That's one of my approaches. I guess another one of my approaches is, uh, well, we kind of talked about it last week. I don't know if you want to get into it actually. Cause we kind of, you know what I'm, I, I you kind of, you know what I'm going to say at all about uh, uh, about that podcast that we listened to and all the good ideas? Oh, right. Yeah. Do you want to get into it a little bit or do you want to wait? I want to wait because I, I want to I, like, I want to understand it myself a little bit more before we get into it. Yeah, bit. I want to try it and see if see if it there's yeah. benefit to it, because that could also change the, the spots, too. Right. Which. Yeah, guy, you got to listen. You got to keep listening to us because we're going to get into a, I think we're going to get into a fun podcast with some, uh, we're going to try some techniques that, that we heard. But, but the thing is, we want to try it for ourselves and before we really talk about it. That's yeah. kind of what we decided to do. And I've, I kind of let it out the bag a little bit, but so my bad. But, no, it's okay. anyways, I'm going to try that though, too, and see where we go. And, it might throw the whole 10 spots right out the window. Cause I might have to come up with a couple more spots by True. doing it. But, but uh, anyway, yeah. So getting off of that though, like um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a hard work in, uh for, for myself. And, and I know for you too, Joe, but uh, it's going to be a hard work in uh, archery season for sure. And I know you got some schedule, you know, a few scheduling conflicts yourself, like, trying to trying to lift me up and make build me up to having all these hats but you you definitely have some of your your own conflicts going on so you know um i mean it, but that's that's kind of where we are that's you know uh i mean we we said it earlier is that's why we're the struggling hunters is you know it's it's more than just the fact that we hunt all day long and have all the time in the world to do it it's it's <laughs> all the other stuff around it that makes it a struggle and and it you was know, all, it was all kind of part of the reason we started this whole podcast. Cause we're like, yeah, yeah we could probably relate to 90% of the people at least. <laughs> right. Well, that, isn't that like just kind of the truth of it all? Like end of day, like it always seems like no matter what your interest in are, is, is, are, is whatever they, whatever your interest, whatever you're interested in there and you want to spend time doing it uh there's always something that like pops up like you know and sometimes it's your own self like yeah you got time to do what you want to do but like you're worn out from work or you know like that taking that chill time is is more important than than doing what you're interested in what you got to do every, you got to do that too like there's so many it's so crazy like how you got to juggle so much like yeah you can just put your head down and grind and kind of tune everybody else out but at the end of the day 
you know, it's all about, like you said, you know, doing your best and forget the rest. Like, you know, yeah, you might be stretched a little thin, but, you know, Carter's going to come back and be happy that you were there for his games and showed up oh, for him. hundred percent. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the most important thing, man, is just being there for the kids and, you know, that beats out everything in my opinion. Is, yeah. Correct. Uh, you know, cause that's all going to come back and pay for itself. And, and, you know, uh, when, when he's an adult and he's doing all his stuff because I was a good dad, you know, he might pay for my whole trip to Alaska one day or something, you know, right. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's yeah. where I feel like, I mean, it's just, it's pretty obvious that it's, it's worth it, but, but, um, no, nah, it's just important to me. And I try to, I try to be as good of a dad as I can or be there as well as I can and, and do what I need to do. And, and, uh, you know, just try to, just try to manage everything the best I can. Can't always do the best, but, uh, I do my best and forget the rest. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so. And that's, yeah, trying to, yeah. But I think that's kind of what we, we were going to talk a little bit about, our, about hunting prep too. And, you know, and that trying to schedule all that in and, and uh, getting, so we kind of mentioned it a little bit, but like hunting prep that goes into, you know, your, your first year archery hunting. I've been archery hunting for a couple of years, but I'm still not a great archer. So I still got to practice. And then on top of that, it's, you know, trying to, you know, we talked to, you know, getting out there and scouting and then, then getting your gear ready too. You know, I, I've, uh, I've kind of started, I got a little tote that I've started throwing like, you know, my, my stuff into that tote as far as, you know, I got a couple, uh, what do you like, uh, just add water mills. We went to Cabela's and bought a couple, bought a box of arrows and I bought some calls um, just cause the ones I have had, they're wearing out and, uh, you know, just getting that prep ready just so that way when the hunt comes, it's not like Friday, oh, excuse me, Friday night before or whatever. And you're like, Hey, uh, <laughs> gotta go out and cause like one year in particular, um, I think it was, I, I used my game bags to pack out my deer one year and I didn't replace them. I just kind of, instead of washing them, I think they're reusable. I just threw them out. And, uh, and the next year I hunted elk and being that it was my first year hunting elk and it's so much earlier, I, Eric can probably attest to it being his first year. He's, the season comes and you're like, Whoa, <laughs> here's the season. I'm, I'm used to have another two or three months until October and to get ready and I'm not. And so I had one that, that first year I like scrounged and was running around to the different Cabela's here in the Salt Lake Valley and sportsman's warehouse. And uh, I couldn't find game bags. <laughs> and, oh really? Yeah. And I just, just tapped. The, I went to the, one of the Cabela's down in Lehigh on my way out to go hunting and just happened to walk by like one of the little kiosks and they just happened to be stocking the, the uh, game bags and was lucky enough to get my game bags. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I feel like that happens almost every year. You try to get everything else in place and then last minute you're like, Oh, that's what I needed. Yeah. I bet I I'm kind of going back and forth. Cause I, I can, I have a pair of, okay binos or whatever you know the the problem is they're not the cool they're not the cool vortex i mean really you know at the end of the day they're not the vortex i want the vortex right it's more of a right. materialistic thing than a, right. than a, a necessity thing but uh um i've been thinking about getting binos and and um uh i mean i could do it but it, but i'm also like ah, man do i want to really like maybe i could just wait out a little longer, save up a little more money and maybe even get the next level up or something, you know, instead of just getting the cheaper vortex ones. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. I mean, I could get the more expensive ones too, but I'm just, it's funny the 
certain things that I get cheap on, but, but it's hard to, it's hard to justify whenever I have a, when I have a pair of binos that I, that it work just fine, you know? Uh, right. Yeah. They're, they're a little older style, you know, they're, they're about as big as my car or whatever, but uh, I mean, you know, they, they work and right. Um, it's just hard to always justify, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll upgrade them one of these days. Um, maybe I might end up doing it this year, but it might end up being next year. So that's like uh, the thing though, like you're saying is like, you know, like I think every hunter can relate to that or even, you know, like just the fact you want to upgrade something and, and you know, there's that, there's that like little list that you build yourself and you're like, well, yeah, they're, they're older. They're, you know, they're, they may be a little bit bigger, but like, you know, we've done, done comparison between mine and yours and there's almost no difference looking through the glass. Yeah. It actually built, I built confidence with my binos because of that. Cause I'm like, oh. Uh, you know why why am i putting so much pressure on myself getting upgrading whenever you look through them and they're about the same now i will say i i had this thought and then i paused and didn't really say it, but my binos did fall apart last year so but, <laughs> and True. we really we really missed like it would have been a really good like short video or something for youtube we we didn't you know we just were staring at me trying to put it back together but after it was all said and done, Joe was like, oh, I should have recorded that. And I'm like, yeah, why didn't you? Because <laughs> it was kind of cool. You know, I was, I put it, I pretty much fixed it right there in the field with my bare hands so, or, you know, with no tools rather. Yeah. So, and they still, still work. So, and that's like what I, you know, getting that is, you know, like trying to make that list of do's and what's and if I's and I really want and the end of the day, like, you know, what you really want and what you really need are two different things. And, you know, you're always like, Oh, well, I want to, that's yeah. It's always funny. Like how that cool factor, you know, like the, I want to be that guy that, you know, like, Oh, he has those, you know, but it's, 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 you know, the end of the day and, you know, can you still hunt? Yeah. Do they, have, do they affect you really that much? Not really. I mean, yeah. But I mean, that's the decision you go through no matter what you're doing. Yeah. You know, sometimes something is wore out and yeah, you're going to replace it. And sometimes it's like, well, <laughs> how do I go about this? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. So uh, I don't know. I was thinking of all these, <laughs> I was kind of thinking of all these jokes about, you know, I was like, well, yeah, the nineties did call and wanted my binos back, but. <laughs> But hey, at the same time, like they work, you know. They also killed elk in the '90s too, so it's not like uh, vortex binos are gonna necessarily bring you more success. But they're nice, no. right? Correct, <laughs> correct. So you know, they're they yeah, they are nice, man. I really, I re I mean, yeah, I really like them. It's just, ah, it's just one of those games that I think every, like you said, man, every every hunter plays in their head, you know, every year. I mean, I get all the emails, you know, with tech, with technology, I guess, but I get all the emails, you know, QU, First Light, uh, Cabela's, Sportsman's, you know, they send me an email and they're like, oh, got a special going on here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what kind of special you got, you know? And yeah. I'm like, oh, five minutes ago, I didn't think I needed that in my life, but now <laughs> I see that I need that in my life. So it's, it's hard, that, man. You know? it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought a... I bought a few things that last minute splurge by just because, especially from QU, I'm such a <laughs> fanboy of them. So <laughs> I don't know why, but I mean, their stuff is nice. I mean, I've never really runs a little tighter than you'd think, you know, you, you get your size and you get it in. You're like, Oh, that little tight, but it'll work. <laughs> you spend all the money on it. So you kind of make it work, but right. Uh, but yeah, it's uh nah, man. The, uh, all that stuff it, and it's fun man that the hunting in industry as far as that goes is kind of well and good because there's a lot of money in that well you know i think you kind of had something there it's kind of off topic but kind of at least there's some cool gadgets you know there are some awesome things that people have developed over the years that 
make hunting a lot easier and a lot nicer and and more bearable or you know a little bit easier as far as gear uh, equipment goes and it can it gets appetizing yeah yeah you know speaking of um i was talking to i i was having a conversation with a uh guy at work but he's a fellow hunter too and and uh and i brought up i brought up the fact of lighted knocks and it, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a unknown like some people don't know that you can have lighted knocks in Colorado. I was going to ask if you can in Utah. I, I don't know if we ever. I don't know that you can because no one ever uses them. Oh, I've really? never looked it up. Yeah. Well, in Colorado, I, I looked, I, I looked it up before, but then every time I. You there? Okay. You there? Yeah. Maybe we yeah, should call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should. Yeah, I think we should while we can, for sure. Um, do, do you have any finishing thoughts? Uh, I know one thing that I said was uh, I'll try to be quick about all this. We might have to get in and edit this stuff out. Oh, I'm going to I for YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but one thing that I said before all this happened was um, was that from what I read in the regulations, you can use lighted knocks out here in Colorado. And uh, I, I'm kind of a fan of them. I, I like them because for a couple different reasons, if, if you get your animal, I mean, and your arrow doesn't go through, or if it does go through, you can at least find your arrow for one. For two, if it doesn't go all the way through, you can at least watch your lighted knock go down the, <laughs> down through the woods. Right. So, right. and, and help you, you know, if it's a good hit or whatever, and they fall, you know, your animal falls down within a hundred yards or whatever, besides just following the blood trail, you can kind of look for your lighted knock also and, and uh, hopefully find it with your lighted knock. So, so I'm a, I'm kind of a fan with the premise of lighted knocks. I think they make sense. Yeah. Uh, but with that, that, that's all I, or I guess you started. So I got it. Do you have any thoughts, any extra <laughs> thoughts? No, I don't. Uh, just thanks for listening. Uh, and thanks for your time. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I guess that pretty much finishes it up. Um, guys, you know, thanks again for listening to the struggling hunters. Uh, we went through a little bit of technical difficulties. We might try to, uh, edit that stuff out. So you might not even see it, but, Thanks for your patience and uh, consider subscribing, liking, doing the whole thing, giving us a comment. If there's a subject or an idea that you want to hear our thoughts on, give us a comment and uh, let us know what you want to hear us talk about. We'll be glad to uh, do a little research or, or maybe just, it's just a talking point and we just put our thoughts to it, whatever it is. Um, but we'd love to do that. So uh to the couple guys that have been commenting with us off and on, man, that's, that's awesome. We're, I mean, that's the engagement that we love seeing. So thanks again for that. And we will talk to you in the next one. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to the struggling hunters. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs>